Hello, thanks for joining me here on the BI WizKid YouTube channel. Now today we are going to show you how to create a date table within seconds in three different ways. This is going to be an epic video. Let's go. Okay, so the way this video is going to go is that I'm going to create three different date tables, one with Power Query, one with DAX, and one with a calendar auto function. And I'll show you how easy it is to just to get going with uh, a standard date table. So the first thing is, why do we need a date table? Well, check out this report here that I've done. This is my football report on Juventus Football Club. So I'll just make myself a little bit smaller here. So now this shows us just a brief overview of Juventus Football Club before the whole uh, pandemic. And as you can see here, we're analyzing points by month now. Let's just zoom into this graph a little bit by going into the focus mode. Now we're looking here at the number of points that were gained by Juventus every single month. So you can't see the ones behind, but it starts at August, September, October, November. And for each month, we can see exactly how many points. So we can see that this season, we had they had 10 points. Last season, season minus one, was seven season minus two which is two years ago 10 points and that goes through every month until around march which is when we had the whole pandemic and everyone was on lockdown and but we still have data from last season and the season before okay now this is possible with a date table creating measures through that date table and here as well if you look at the the projected points for juventus in the in this season as well so as you can see it sort of kept going up until around March and then it started leveling off for the last two months. But it's still giving you a forecast of where it expects uh, or how many points it expects uh, Juventus to get based on historic data that's in the table. So this is the type of analysis we can do with the date table and why it is important. So let's get going and create some date tables. OK, so date table number one, we're going to start with Power Query date table. So this is a blank file. I've just got my fact sales here. Now all I'm going to do is go straight to get data blank query. Then we go to advanced editor. From here I've got my text. So this is a function that I've got which I'm going to copy and simply paste. Then I'm going to click done. Give it a second and then voila now i can select my start date so january 1st 2015 copy that go in here 2020 and click invoke now i already have my date my year quarter of year month of year iso weeks week ID, week name, period, quarter period, whatever you want, you have there. So that is probably the best date table within seconds. And all we need to do then is load it in. And we now have our first Power Query date table, which we can then join onto our model. Date joins onto order date. Back into here, click on date, go and grab our sales. Now we have our sales from 2015 all the way to 2018. Cool. So that was the first date table, date table one. Date table two is going to be using DAX. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to our modeling tab. In the modeling tab, you've got an option here that says new table. Okay. Now this allows you to create a new table on the fly. And what we're going to create is a date table. And I'm just going to call it DAX date table equals. And then we're going to go over here where I have some more code. And I'm going to take a copy of this and I'm going to paste this in here. So I'm just going to click this tick button here, wait for a second. And if we go over to our data tab, click on our DAX table, we can now see 
that we've got. We've got a date, we've got a calendar year, we've got a month name, we've got a month number, we've got a weekday, we've got a week number, and we've got a quarter as well. Okay, so let's go back over here. We'll go to our tax date table. We can now join our order date to our date over here. So now we've got two date tables, which is not what we need, but we're just showing you how to create all the different date tables. And so again, we can go to our date table here, expand this out, go to our fax sales. We can get our sales amount. And then now, again, you can see that we've got our 2015, 16, and 17. Yeah, excellent. So that was date table number two. Okay, now this is number three. Check this out, calendar auto. Okay, so we're gonna go to our modeling tab again. We're gonna go to new table. Okay, now when this comes up, we're gonna type in and call this auto date table. Okay, and then we're gonna say calendar auto fiscal year ending month. We don't want a fiscal year. We don't want anything in there. We're just gonna click okay. And we're just gonna hit return, hashtag boom easy as now this is a great option if all you want is a list of dates okay if we go over to our auto date table all you need is a list of dates that goes from the earliest date in your model to the latest date in your con in your model then this is all you need so let's say the earliest date in your model is the 1st of february 2015 what this calendar auto will do it will take the earliest month within your year so it'll go back to the 1st of january 2015 and if your data goes to uh, september 2018 it will go all the way to december 2018 so it will go all it will complete that full calendar year for you uh, whatever the maximum date is in your particular model and and that's it and now we can add columns onto this we can do dax measure measures and queries and use other bits and pieces um, and, and add on to that as we have done with the other uh, DAX table as well. Okay, so right. So which one is the best? Which is the best date table of, of them all, and which one should you use? Okay, so let's look at it this way: the Power Query date table that we created. Now that one was created in Power Query. It was created in the back end. All the processing that takes place for that particular part of the model takes place in the background so it doesn't affect the performance of your report on the front end okay now the date table that we created with DAX and the auto date table we created that is running on the front end here on Power BI so when you filter and cross filter visual there's queries being sent to that particular table every time it's being used and and so there's some there's some slight performance hit when you use a date table created here in DAX in Power BI front end so and that's a, that's the main difference between the two so if you want to make sure that your performance is not going to be affected by the day table use the power query version put it in the back back end let it just refresh daily it'll update the dates but if you want it to if you want to create it within your power bi model then you know go ahead and do that as well if you've got a small data set that'll be fine uh, but if you are uh, importing millions of rows of data uh, you're going to have a lot of analysis you want uh, to take that performance hit away from the front end ideally and then have it in the back end in Power BI just running away so it's not using any processing power at all okay so thanks for joining me hope that video is okay please like and comment on anything down below if you need anything just give me a shout I'm quite responsive on the channel please uh, follow me and subscribe to my channel as well uh, I'll be releasing plenty of videos coming up soon Okay, take care, see you soon.